Hi guys, it's me, Katie Lee, CGC, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to be talking about NIPT, or non-invasive prenatal testing. I just got my NIPT results back, and I wanted to walk through my results report and explain what each box and each number means. There are a lot of different companies that offer NIPT or NIPS, sometimes it's called non-invasive prenatal screening tests, and they are under a lot of different brand names. The test that I had done is Panorama. It's offered by a company called Natera, but there are a lot of great competitors out there. If you're interested in NIPT, I would just ask your doctor, your OB, what tests they offer, and you can ask specific questions about that test. Today I'm really gonna focus on my Panorama results in the Panorama test. I will be honest, most of the NIPT tests are very similar. They're looking for similar things, but there can be some subtle differences. Sometimes it's important to use one brand or another depending on if you're looking for something really specific. Now for most pregnancies, NIPT is used as a general screen. It is a general screen that can be done on a sample of blood from the person who's pregnant. And this is a test that's only been around, it's been around for less than 10 years. It's a huge improvement from what we had before. Before we had different types of blood tests that had a much lower accuracy. So NIPT is a great test, it's pretty accurate, but it's not diagnostic. It does not have a 100% accuracy and there can be misdiagnoses. Depending on the specific condition, misdiagnoses can be fairly common. So this is not a test that you are to make medical decisions off of. If you had an NIPT result that was abnormal, showing an increased risk for something like Down syndrome, this is not a test that you would make a decision like to terminate the pregnancy based upon. You would want to have confirmatory testing with an invasive test like amniocentesis before you ever made a decision because a test like amniocentesis has a higher level of accuracy. Let's just talk in general. What is NIPT? So non-invasive, this is a test that does not require a needle going through your abdomen to collect a sample of amniotic fluid. This is a non-invasive test. It just uses a blood sample from the arm of the person who's carrying the pregnancy. Prenatal test, that's kind of non-specific, but this is a test that's going to look to see if there's an increased risk for things like Down syndrome. <laughs> Now, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and screen share my results and walk through each section of the results report. Here are my NIPT results that were returned to me just a few weeks ago. Um, you can see the top left corner is full of my information. And this test is a test that should be available to you by your OBGYN, essentially regardless of your age, whether you're an 18 year old person or a 45 year old person or somewhere in between. You can see it says maternal age at EDD. EDD is just a term to mean estimated delivery date or date of delivery. So by the time this pregnancy or this baby's born, I would be 31 years old. Gestational age, how far along in pregnancy was I when my blood was drawn for this test? I was 11 weeks and two days, but you can get this test drawn as early as about nine weeks in pregnancy. So it is one of those tests that it's amazing how early you can find out this information. Um, testing information. Not too much exciting here, but you can see the laboratory received my blood on the 26th of February and my results were reported on March 5th. So it took about a week for the results to come back. And that's pretty typical for most NIPT companies. Again, the company that my OB's office uses is Natera, which I definitely consider to be a reputable lab. If you're looking for NIPT or something else, I've never worked for them before, but I have used them for other testing I've done after my miscarriages. The name of their NIPT is called Panorama. You can see there's a summary right here, which I've already talked about the fact that NIPT or Panorama is not a diagnostic test. It explains that the way Panorama works is by looking at fetal DNA that is found in the pregnant person's blood. That is used to determine the chance for specific chromosome abnormalities. This test cannot tell you for certain that a fetus is affected or unaffected. Okay, let's move on to the results summary. So pretty straightforward. I was found to be low risk for all of the conditions that were tested for. The sex of the fetus is predicted to be female based on these results. And then the fetal fraction. Fetal fraction refers to the amount of DNA coming from the baby in that blood sample from the person who is carrying the fetus. On average, about 10% of the DNA in the person carrying the pregnancy's blood is from the fetus. So that would be a 10% fetal fraction. But that number can actually vary really significantly just depending on the day even in the exact same pregnancy. So 6.7 fetal fraction is just fine. Unfortunately, sometimes NIPT results can come back inconclusive when the fetal fraction is too low. I believe the cutoff for too low of a fetal fraction for reliable results is about three or three and a half percent. 
Okay, scrolling down, we can see exactly what was tested for with Panorama's NIPT that I had drawn. The pregnancy was tested for trisomy 21, which is the scientific name for Down syndrome, trisomy 18, and trisomy 13. A lot of people haven't heard of these two syndromes. They are two syndromes that are generally much more severe than trisomy 21. They cause multiple birth defects, oftentimes brain malformations, and birth defects that are so severe that oftentimes those babies pass away in their first few days of life. Um, and then it also looked for monosomy X, which would be a pregnancy with a single X chromosome instead of two X's for a typical female or an X and a Y for a typical male. Um, triploidy is when an individual has three sets of chromosomes rather than two sets. So instead of 46 chromosomes, 69 chromosomes. Triploidy would not result in an ongoing pregnancy. Unfortunately, that would typically lead to miscarriage. You can see that I had a low risk for all five of these conditions that were tested for. They provided a risk before the test. Generally, this risk before the test would be calculated based on my maternal age. We know that the risk for chromosome syndromes like these goes up as we age as females. Even if you're an 18 year old person carrying a pregnancy, there is a chance that you have a baby affected with one of these syndromes, but the risk increases each year of that egg source's life. So this was my risk just based on my maternal age. And then this is my risk after the testing, after the NIPT test. So you can see my risk for any of those syndromes is quoted to be less than one in 10,000, which sounds pretty darn reassuring to me. Um, of note, some different NIPT laboratories test for additional chromosomes. So if you're looking for something specific, you wanna to talk to your OBGYN or a genetic counselor and make sure that whatever you're worried about or concerned about, maybe because of your own pregnancy history, is included on the screen. A lot of the NIPT companies are starting to include microdeletion syndromes, which are syndromes caused by just a small loss of a piece of a chromosome, a very small piece of a chromosome. And Natera's panorama test actually is able to test for quite a few different uh, microdeletion syndromes, but my OBGYN only ordered the 22Q11.2 deletion syndrome. I'm just fine with that. Um, the testing for microdeletions isn't quite as accurate as the testing for the chromosome syndromes. And generally, the risk for these microdeletion syndromes, as you can see here, is quite a bit lower of a risk than the risk for um, something like, like Down syndrome or trisomy 18. Um, so my test results came back negative or low risk, I should say, for the 22Q11.2 deletion syndrome. If you scroll down to the second page, there is some more information about the details of the testing. So sensitivity, specificity, positive predictive value, negative predictive value. Essentially, what you want to get out of this is that this test is not perfect. Just like I've said a few times before, there is a chance, even when you get a positive result, that your baby is not affected with the syndrome that you were at a high risk for. So positive predictive value focusing on this column here is the likelihood that the result says high risk and the fetus is actually affected with that specific syndrome. In 91% of the cases where somebody's panorama results come back high risk for trisomy 21, they do actually have a baby that is affected with trisomy 21. In the remaining 9% of the cases where their result came back high risk for trisomy 21, their baby is not affected with that syndrome. And you can see that the positive predictive values are even lower for some of the other syndromes, and especially for the microdeletion syndrome. Now, on the other hand, negative predictive value is much better with NIPT testing. That's the likelihood that if the result says low risk, the fetus really is not affected with that syndrome. So you can see here that the negative predictive value is quite good. It's greater than 99.99%. So I am quite reassured, though I know there's never a guarantee with anything related to pregnancy or fertility. Um, I'm quite reassured that my pregnancy is probably not affected with any of these syndromes I was screened for. I really like the Panorama reports. It's a simple two-page report. There's not much else to it. And Natera has quite a few genetic counselors working for them. So they provide their phone number right here. You can always reach out to them if you have questions about NIPT in general or about your NIPT results. So that's it from me, guys. That is pretty much all there is to NIPT. It is a really nice test that can give you a little bit of reassurance about some specific genetic syndromes really early in pregnancy, right around that 10 week mark or so. Remember, if you have questions about NIPT or questions about your results report, speak with your doctor. If you've got general questions for me, let me know down below and let me know what you'd like to hear me talk about in the future. All right, take care guys.